Hey all of you, hope you guys are great. So a lot of you guys have encountered a lot of error in the NFT project and I got a huge messages in the Discord servers. You guys have encountered different type of error. So I'll try to cover all the error in this video that how you can fix that. Okay. So here you can see that I have initialized this NFT project in my local host. Okay. So I'm not deployed this application on any test network. It's on my local host. And here I have already created a couple of NFTs from five different accounts. So if I come here and here you can able to find that this is the one NFT I have created. This is the one NFT I have created. If I click on this, I don't own any NFT. So let me buy an NFT. So I'll simply go back, go back to the search page and let me come back to the search page. And here I have all the NFT. You can see our router is also working and we have already fixed that cross origin error which most of you guys were having so if you haven't watched in that i have told you that you have to install this extension so make sure to get that extension to fix this issue okay so right now i'm going to buy this nft because many of you said that you guys have having error when you try to buy the nft so this nft is created by account one okay so i'll simply click on this you can see we don't have any issues in that you can see the address of the seller and you can see the owner and here you will find all the detail about the NFT. So this is the description. This is the ID number of the NFT. Everything is working fine. And here we have the button for buying NFT. I don't know why you guys are getting an error. You guys are maybe not following the entire project step by step. If you follow that, you guys will not have any error. Maybe you guys are watching straight away and you are simply copying, pasting the, the code. That's why you guys are having that issue because you are missing the very crucial part. So if I want to buy this NFT, all I have to do is click on this and here you can see here I have the MetaMask. So I have no issues in buying the NFT. Here you can see this is the MetaMask is open and I'm going to buy this NFT. So for buying this NFT, I have to pay 60 Ether. So just wait and here you can see this is the 60 amount and in dollar, we have to pay this much amount to buy this NFT. Simply click on confirm. And here we are on the author page and here you can see this is the NFT we have created and if you click on this own NFT, you can see this is the NFT which we have bought. So the buying process is happening. I don't know what problem you guys are having. If I come here, if I go to this again search page and if I try to buy one more NFT, it would be working fine. So this time I'm going to buy this dude, the yellow one and here I have this button to buy NFT. Click on this and here you can see the MetaMask is open. We don't, have, we don't have any error right now, but there are a couple of fix which I'm going to highlight that how you can fix that. Okay, so this is the one, simply click on confirm and you can see this is the NFT we bought it. So if I click here and I got the NFT and what if I want to resell this NFT? Because many of you have pointed out that you guys are having error when you try to resell the NFT. So if I try to resell this NFT, you can see that here I'm on NFT detail page and here you will find this list to NFT marketplace and many of you said that why this seller address is zero so when you release your nft it's go to the nft marketplace smart contract and because of this they find that it's not going to be with any address any wallet address it's going to be to the nft marketplace contract so that's why you get this zero address that's the one thing you have to keep in mind because Next time when someone try to buy this NFT, NFT marketplace is going to sell the NFT, not your wallet. So that's why this address is zero. Okay, so hope that makes sense to all of you. Now let's try to relist this one. So if I click on this list on NFT, here I redirect to the resell NFT and here I have to put the price, the one I want. And many of you guys have the error in this as well. I don't know why, because maybe you have picked some of the in, missed some of the important part because of that you were getting the error. So here I want to set this NFT price to 100. Earlier it was 60 and this time I want to set to 100 Ether. Click on this resell and here I have the metamats. No error. You can see I am simply reselling this NFT. I have no issues in this and here I have to simply confirm my transaction. So just wait. Here you can see this is the charge I have to pay for relisting the NFT so simply click on confirm and the relisting process is got done and if I come here here you can see this is the NFT we have relisted and if you come to the own NFT right now we have one you can release this as well so everything's working fine let me show you that how you can create so let's come here if I come to the upload sections and here you can see this time I'm connected with the account number 
four maybe i am connected with account number four let me check my metamask you can see here i am right now i'm account number five so i'll click here and i will go to my account number one if i go to the account number one and simply reload the browser and here we are back we have no more error so we are connected with that you can see this is the loader it's fetching the nfts so it takes some time so what i can do let's come here let's go back to the search page and let's try to have a look there if we click on the search page and here we are on the search page it's reloading it's fetching the nft and here we got all the nfts and if i come back to the author profile if i go to the author profile so with this account number three or maybe i account number two so here i this is the two nft i have created if i click on this i don't own any nft so i can simply buy that so everything is working fine now let's come to the code and let me show you that what are the fix i have done and here we are in the context file. So when we started building our NFT project, at that time we had used this global IPFS URL to upload the NFT. But some recent update and in that they have simply removed this global IPFS URL for uploading the NFT to the IPFS. So you can't able to use this one. So to use the IPFS for uploading the NFT, you have to get your own project key, secret key and the subdomain which I have already explained that how you can get it. So here I have my project ID. I have my project secret key. I have my auth. So this is the same URL you have to construct. And here I have the subdomain. So these are the three changes you have to do. And if you come back to the Infura, if I click on this, go back to the Infura here, I have already created that. So this is this is the data. Once you create an account into your IPFS, click on this project here, you will find the project ID. API endpoint secret key and here you can easily do able to do all the configurations So make sure to get all the data from here if I come to the infura Here you can simply come and from here you can easily able to select the product So if I want to create a API key for the IPFS simply click on this and from here you can easily able to create and get the API key so you can select the project which you want so select this api and then you have to give the name and then you will have the same interface from there you can easily able to copy the api key and the secret key so first change you have to do here so make sure to put your project key project secret key subdomain and the client so that's the first thing and here what i have done this is the import we have and this is the fetch contract don't need to do any changes in that and here i have not done any changes so this is connect with smart contract so make sure to go with the similar setting don't need to do any changes into this function. This is our context. This is our provider. These are the state variables we have taken. And here we have this check if wallet is connected. So this is the function we have whenever someone opens your application in the browser, this function will get triggered and it will try to connect the MetaMask and it will show the MetaMask MetaMask uh, metamask pop-up so user can connect but many of you guys said that you don't want to have this behavior you want that user should click on the connect wallet and then they should have the metamask pop-up so for that what i have done let's come here here i have simply turn off this okay so earlier we were setting the error message that no account is no account found and we were setting the error model so simply comment this all you have to do is to do that so that error component will not display so this is the one change you have to do and here we have the same the provider you don't need to do any changes here and here we have this error message again you have to simply comment that because we don't want to display any error and here you can see that earlier what we were doing that we were calling this check wallet is connected functions so whenever someone reload the browser we were calling that function so we have simply closed that function we are not calling that and we were also calling this function connect with smart contract because earlier you have noticed that to fetch the data from the smart contract we need to have a provider then only we can easily able to fetch the NFT and display. But right now we're not going to connect. We're not going to call this function at the very beginning because we're going to provide a default provider and we're going to assign that default provider to the smart contract to fetch the data. So that's why I have simply comment these two functions. So make sure to do that. Let me comment this one. No changes you have to do. And here we have the connect wallet functions. And here we have already attached this function to our button. And here we are calling this function. So right now you can see connect with smart contract. So this is the function we are calling here instead of calling here. So this is the function we have. This is the function. So when someone will click on the connect wallet, this function will get triggered and it will set the provider to the current provider, the one who is interacting with our application. So this is the one change you have to do, which is very important. Okay. 
So that's the current ball in function we have and here we you don't need to do any changes in the IPFS. It would be the same. The same IPFS, the same URL you have to construct. This is the create NFT. And here we have this messages, here we have the data, and this is the subdomain which we have built. No changes you have to do into that. And here we have this create. So here you don't need to do any changes, just go in the same way. Okay, here we have to display the error message if anything goes wrong, if someone missed the image, if someone missed the price. So we have to display the error message, no need to do the changes here. And here we have to do a lot of changes. So earlier what I was doing, I was connected this application with the Polygon test network because as you need that the demo website is deployed on the Polygon test network. And that's the RPC URL I was providing into our etherprovider.rpc. So make sure to comment this because right now I'm showing everything on my local host. Okay, so comment this and here we have this Web3 model. So instead of going with this Web3 model, we have to use a default provider because when you have this function, this Web3 model. So this Web3 models need a provider and a signer needs a signer, the one who is interacting with the contract, <clears throat> open the application. And if someone is not connected with the application, it will throw that error message that uh, NFT dot reverse. Many of you have got that error. And that was happening because of this, because we were not having any signer and we are trying to communicate with our contract. So make sure to comment this. And here, what we going to do is here, we're going to use the default provider. And this is how you can build a get a default provider ether provider and just type rps in provider and you don't need to pass anything in here so this will automatically get the default provider and that default provider you can easily able to pass into this fetch contract so when you pass this in fetch contract you are not specifying any particular user any particular address it's just getting the default provider which is gave you which is given to you by the etherjs package okay so this is the one major change you have to do because once you do that, the most of the error will be gone. Okay, so make sure you here you have to go with the default provider, not with this provider, Web3 provider. And that's the change I have done here. And that's the provider I'm passing here. So if I come back to the application, if I come back to application, so right now you can see if I come here and if I simply don't connect with this. So here I'm into the search page and here I have all the NFT. So if I click on this MetaMask and here I'm going to simply log out from the MetaMask account and you will notice that these all NFT would be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this log out and I'm going to simply reload the browser. So the moment I will reload the browser, my MetaMask will not pop up because we have stopped that behavior. So just wait and here you can see the application is open and right now the metamask is not open here it's saying that connect wallet connect and here you will find all the nfts which is already listed and that's happening because here we have taken this default provider because we are fetching the data from our smart contract and for getting the smart data from the smart contract you need to have a provider without that you can't do that so here we are providing the default provider to get all the nfts and building all the logics so that's how you can create and if I want to simply connect, I can simply click, click on this connect wallet and it will open the pop up and I can simply pick my account, the account which I want to connect with. So just wait, it's reloading and here I have to pass the address. So no more problem. Here you can see connect function. I got it. If I reload the browser, I still have no issues. You can see I still have no issues and still I'm getting all the data of these NFTs which already exist. And if you want to create, you can simply do that. Here you can see it's loading and here we have all the data. So that's the change you have to do. Instead of going with the Web3 provider, you have to provide the default provider and that will fix the issue. And that's everything looks fine to me. Now simply scroll down and here you can see that here we have wrapped these functions in this current account. You can do this or you can simply omit this behavior because right now we are not going with this. We are not checking for that whether the account exists or not, we are simply calling straight away. So if we reload the browser, we'll have no issues. You can do the same thing for the fetch my NFT, but I would recommend you to first allow user to connect and then you allow them to check whether they have the NFT or not. Okay, because this one is for the individual. So we will go in this behavior. No need to do the changes Here we have to display the error message and we have to call this functions. And this is the entire buying functions. Okay. So I haven't done any changes in this. If I come back to the browser, still I get all the data. 
still I get all the data so I'm having no issues in that it's fetching all of the data so here I got all of the data this polygons and obviously this is my address you have to put your address if you really want to deploy into any test network or you can go with the folk network testing as well so everything is working fine now let me show you that when you deploy the contract and open the application in the browser how it's look okay everything's look fine because many of you have asked this question that when you are opening the application in the browser you are getting an error so let me show you type npx hard at and clean i have to delete the old artifact so it's deleted now i have to simply initialize the node let's come to the side clear the terminal and simply deploy the contract so i'm deploying to the local host click on this deployed and here you can see this is what we have here and that looks fine to me compile successfully and we got the same address so that we don't need to do any changes here simply click here and we'll type npm run dev it will open the application in the browser and now we can test this out so let me check the recording mode is on yes it's on and that looks fine to me no more error we are having here so just a moment and you can see it's absolutely working fine we have this connect button and the metamask is not popping up if you scroll down you can see the loader is keep running because we don't have an nft so it will keep reloading so let me show you in the search page if i come to the search page you will find the same behavior here nothing is there now if you click on this connect it will open the metamask and now we can easily be able to connect so password and you can see this is the password I got it so here I got connected with applications you can see connected I can click on this and I can simply create the NFT so before I do that I have to do one thing I have to simply click on this metamask and I have to delete all the history otherwise it will throw me an error click on this go to the advanced and reset account once you're done with that simply reload the browser and round and here you can see it says connect to make sure to click on this connect and because it's already connected in the background but when you will have this connect make sure to do that on that otherwise it will throw an error so make sure to click on this connect we or we you can add a simple function which can always check for the account changes we have not included that but you can add that functionality which can change look for the changes in the account so here we have that click on this and from here we can easily able to get the get the nft so let's say the this is the one i want to upload this is the image i have and i can call it background hey buddy oh just type this this give the demo data and property and here i'm going to be with the 40 40 ether now click on this deploy here you will have the metamask pop-up here you got the pop-up and now we have to make the confirmations click on this confirm and the transaction went through you can see we are redirected to, to this search page and here we have fetched the nft and the reason the transaction went through very quickly because we are doing on the local host but when you will do on the test network on the main network it will take time if you click here you can simply come back to the detail page this one and you can't buy your own nft because this is the one which you have created okay if you go to the author page you can see this is the author you can see this is the author page we have this is the one we have created and right now we don't own any nft so now what i will do i'll click here and i can simply simply just wait this is the account number two now we'll go with account number three to show you the transaction is also happening so make sure to restart uh, sorry reset the account otherwise it will throw you an error and reload the browser and once you reload the browser all the state which you have defined in the program that will come to default you can able to find the nft but you can see this account will say connect but or you can build a simple script which can look for the changes in the metamask account which i'm not going to do i'm going to leave on you guys click on this and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply create another nft and this time i'll go with this nft one here i have the nft will say 
dollar NFT will type say F F F F F F and this will give whatever you want. I just typing this random text, click on this one one you can give any value to this and here I can say 34 click on this and the metamask will open here you have the metamask and simply here you have to do the confirmation click on this confirm and here the transaction went through and it's fetching the data so these are the two NFT which is created and now we can simply come here go to this author page you can easily able to find the NFT which you have created. You don't own an NFT. So I'll come back to the search page and I'm going to buy this NFT because this is the NFT which I've created from the second account, first account, and you can able to find all the details and you will find this buy button. So click on this buy button. Here you will have the MetaMask open and you can simply provide the amount. Click on this confirmation, 40 ETH we are paying. Click on this confirm. And here we are redirect to the author page. You can see right now this is the listed NFT. And if you click on this own NFT and here you have owned this one. If you click on this, here you have this called list to NFT marketplace. So you want to resell this one. Everything is getting changed. So we have the seller address is going to be the zero added, which is going to be our smart contract. And this is your own address. So click on this. And here you have it to the resell account. And here you will take, say, I'll say go with 500. Too much money. Click on this e resale and here you have this confirmation. Okay, so click on this confirm and that looks fine. So if you come back to author page, so this is your account address. You can see this is the NFT you have released listed. And if you go to the N NFT right now, you don't have. So believe that everything is working fine to all of you guys. Okay, so if you guys really want that things should work for all of you. So make sure to do all these changes which I have explained into this. A lot of you guys have encountered this cross origin error. Okay, and I have also explained you that how you can fix this issue. But still many of you are guys are getting this error. And many of you have said that let's do this with the code, not with extension. Okay, and if, let's come here. Let me show you if I do the console log. If I come here, go to this console log and right now you can see that I'm getting this NFTs from the IPFS. Okay, so because we are facing this from the IPFS and that's how the cross origin is happening because this application is hosted on the on the local host domain and the data we are getting it's coming from somewhere else in the IPFS. So that's how the cross origin exactly work. So if I come here, here you can see I have the data and the moment I will click on this extension and I will stop this extension and reload the browser, I'll have an error. So it will throw me this error. So it will throw me the error. And here you can see the error is happening. And here we got the error. It says that cannot read properties of undefined because our IPFS, the our cross origin, which we have in the Chrome browser or almost all the browser has this functions that's blocking the data. And that's what you can able to get here. You can see this is the error log you will, you will get. It says that network error access error. Okay, so make sure to install these extension. Obviously, in the production, you're not going to use this method to fix this issue. But if you guys have still encounter any error in the development, then make sure to install this extension M O E S I F Mosif cross and this will fix the error because right now I'm not going to do with the code because I have to do a lot of configuration in the data modeling. So make sure you install this extension and start building this project if you have stopped because of this error. Okay, but definitely in future, if I get a chance, I will come with a small script and I will provide you that script and I will tell you that how you can fix this issue with the code. Okay, so you can use it in the production level. But right now, I'm not going to do that. Otherwise, it will take me a lot of time. I have to redesign the entire data model to fix this issue. Okay, Let's come back to the search page. Here you will have all the NFT which you will create. So we haven't done anything fancy. You can see we have fixed all the issues, all the issues. If you come to the context here, you can see this is the packages we have installed. These are the old IPFS URL, which is not working because Infura have changed it. So right now you have to go to the Infura. You have to create your own IPFS project and that you will have the project ID, project secret key and the subdomain. So instead of going with my you have to put your own. If you come back to the imports, we haven't done any changes here in that. We haven't done in the changes here in that. But here we have to do the changes. So here we have this connect with a smart contract. We haven't done any, anything in the functions, but we have done in the function calls. So this says looks fine to me. 
here we are logging the account address and this is the function we are calling check if wallet is connected so you have both the option you can call this functions right away whenever someone will come to your application and reload the browser so this function will get triggered and it will automatically connect the user but many of you guys say that you don't want this behavior so we have changed that behavior and we are not calling this functions and that's what you can see here we have omitted that function and we are also omitted this function connecting with the smart contract because if you really want to fetch the data from the smart contract connecting with a smart contract need a provider which can fetch all the information from the contract and display so right now we are not calling this functions straight away whenever someone reload the page so we're going to change this behavior and we're going to call this function in the connect volley function so when someone is connected only then we have to call this function so in this way we will not have that nft error okay and here we are simply omitting that error so you can display the error message or you can simply not but i'll go like this here we have the ipfs you don't need to do any changes here we have the create nft we haven't done any changes here so make sure to check this one and this is the create sale function we have in that we are doing all the same things we have not done any changes and this is the fetch nft and here you have to do the major changes so instead of going with this web3 connections you have to provide this default rpc url because to fetch the data from the smart contract we need a provider and this provider is a zero address base okay so it will give you it will connect it will allow you to connect with the smart contract and you can able to fetch all the data all the nft from the smart contract without connecting the application without connecting with to with the wallet and the rest is going to be the same here we are returning the data if you come back to the the here we are simply omitting that error component i believe that if you want you can simply turn it or if you don't like that behavior you can simply turn it off and here we are simply removing this if and here you can simply comment this out because we are going with the default provider so we don't need to check for the account and here we are checking this calling this function fetch my nft or listed nft and in that we have to build this connection conditions so if only account exists then we want to call this function otherwise we don't need to call it because if you call it without wrapping in this if statement it will throw you with an error because it will say that there is no data is exist with that particular user because to get that data exists to get that data for the particular user you need to have a particular provider that address and that would be only possible if he's connected with the application so make sure you have to wrap this and the rest would be fine here again i'm not displaying this error message or you can display it's totally up to you and here we are calling the functions fetch my nft whenever someone reload the browser and this is the buy function i don't know why you guys are having issue with the buy function everything's working fine you can see i simply bought the nft and i resell the nft and this is the contract which i have written for the nft transfer so like if you come back to the contract here we have multiple contract bidding transfer so we have these functions all the function we have written and that's the contract we are interacting with so if you want to deploy this contract and do the transfer of the nfts a uh, sorry funds so you can go with this also this one is also working absolutely fine okay so that looks pretty fine to me and that's the only changes you have to do that's the only changes you have to do in the context if you come to the pages if you go to the mm, index page here we have not done any changes all we have done is we have simply comment this we are not looking for the address we are simply calling this function straight away and if you go to the search page we have done the same thing here we are simply committed this and this and then calling the function straight away and we are having everything is working fine so make sure to do these changes and everything is working fine everything is working fine if you really want to deploy into any test network that's very easy all you have to do is to come back to the and if you want to deploy into the test network which i have already explained how you can do that so i'm not the project will have multiple version okay so you can see i have deployed this on a polygon in the live one and here is the forking one which you can use to test come back to the context and if you come here to do is here in the fetch nft and instead of using this this provider like this default provider you have to use this provider and if you and here you have to provide the rpc url or you can simply go with this approach if you have defined this rpc url in the metamask so if i come to the metamask and if i open this and if you go to the metamask and if you go to the network sections into the network section you will find that here we have the multiple network 
here we have the multiple network so here i have all this network if you click on this network this is the rpc url so you have both the options you can define the rpc url right up here as a provider and that's what you can pass into the contract or you can simply go with this approach web3 model and this rpc url you have to provide in here 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 in the network sections so you have seen i have this multiple network if i click on this you can see i here i have provided that so if i remove that it will work in the fine way so that looks fine to me so hope that entire things make sense to all of you guys again i will provide this code which is 100 percent working and if you guys have still encountered any error so make sure to check all the packages which we have used check all the code compare your code okay compare your code because these are the very simple things don't straight away watch from small part obviously in that way you will have a lot of error because what exactly what are you doing guys that you are watching a specific part most of you guys have watched that how to connect a smart contract with front end and many of you watch that and you are saying that the contract is not working i have seen this mistake which you have made a lot of time so make sure to do all the changes which i have told you if you really want your code to be working and you can see it's working 100 percent fine in my scenario so this is the code i'm going to provide to all of you right in the disc right in the like discord server and i'm going to upload this entire code to my github repo and obviously i'm going to change my private key and the ipv key in that you have to provide your own so hope this entire things make sense and with that i'm ending this video and this is the last video i'm going to make on this if you guys have encountered any error make sure to watch the video and try to understand go through the entire project don't watch small part of the pro small portion of the project and you come up with the error message okay so everything's working fine here we have no issues in the smart contract no no issues in the smart contract you can see many of you say that you guys have encountered error in the smart contract but everything's working fine you can see we have redeployed the same smart contract and here we have built all the functionality for updating for getting price for creating token for creating token item so we have built all the functionality try to understand if you don't know how to write a salty smart contract then make sure to watch the complete salty course which i have on my youtube channel which is absolutely free and that we have learned about the building the smart contract i have talked about that how you can learn a for loop how to build a condition so all of these things i have covered in detail so make sure to check the salty course because if you don't know how to how salty smart salty programming language work then it will create a problem you can't able to a sense get a sense of this function which we have built that what exactly we are doing here okay so make sure to re-watch if you don't understand this NFT marketplace which I have already explained in detail and if you don't know the solid programming language make sure to watch the complete project in that we have built multiple contract and that will give you a complete idea. Mm -hmm. With that I'm ending this video and you guys will get this code on the uh, articles on the website and the discord server. So make sure to follow from there. So with that have a wonderful day.